Here is a short clip from my Altium Live presentation where I talk about currents and why it is important to understand them. Current doesn't always flow the shortest way. What? <laughs> now, this may look like a very basic topic. By now, almost every engineer knows that return currents are traveling under signals, especially for high speed. However, I still would like to talk about it because it's like super uh, important. So what is it all about? Here is an example. On this first picture, we can see three tracks. It's the green color, routed about a big solid ground plane. That is the brown color. On the second picture, there is the same board, but now there are 500 Hertz signals running through the tracks. And uh, we can see the return current for these signals are somehow trying to flow on the ground plane in the area under the tracks. The blue color means there are no currents. The red color means a lot of current. When we increase the frequency to 1 MHz, that is what we can see on the third picture. The return currents for 1 MHz signals, they are very nicely flowing on the ground plane exactly under the tracks. Now, what does it mean return current? At school, we are usually told that current flows for example, from battery through a switch to a light, and then it somehow returns back to the battery. And many engineers keep thinking this way even after they start designing boards professionally. I'm going to be honest. When I started designing boards, I was thinking exactly the same way. Current goes there and return current goes back like this. And then there was this moment when I realized, oh, that's not how I should imagine currents in high-speed circuits. The better way to imagine return currents in high-speed signal is uh, that these return currents travel together with the signal edge, like this. Now, why is it important to understand return currents? Because suddenly it will help us to understand other things. For example, why we may need to use stitching vias. In this animation, a signal is routed from layer 1 to layer 4, and we are using a ground via, or it's also called a stitching via, to make it easier for the return current to flow together with the signal. And because we are aware of the return current, now we can be like, oh, wait, but what will happen if there is no stitching via? This is why it is important to understand return currents, because you suddenly start thinking about your layout differently. By the way, on these uh, other pictures, you can see what will happen in different situations. For example, if there is no stitching via, you can see the return current will spread all over the whole ground plane. If uh, there is a stitching via but placed far away from the place where the signal is changing layers, some currents will find a way to go through that via, but there still will be a lot of current flowing around the board. Much better it is to place the stitching via close to the place where signal is changing layers, or even better it is to place more vias. Now, why it can be useful to control the path of the currents flowing on your big solid ground plane? Several reasons, but 
One uh, very practical is that you can have, for example, analog or sensitive or digital circuits all placed on one single PCB and routed the way that they are all going to work perfectly fine on one single board. On the last picture, there is a lot of space with the blue color. This is the space with no currents flowing around and this blue space would be a good place for other circuits because the currents from our new circuit would not be mixing together with the currents from our track which is already routed on the board. However, when we have a look at the first picture, where would be the good place to put a new analog or sensitive circuit? There are already currents flowing everywhere. There would be no good uh, place for the new circuit. There is no mm, good place for analog or sensitive circuit because the currents of the existing track are flowing all around the board and uh, they would be mixing with the currents from these new circuits and they could be influencing each other. Another example why it is useful to think about return currents. Imagine we have a situation like this, a big ground plane with a gap in the middle because we know that return currents like to flow under the tracks, we will immediately understand, oh, there may be a problem. What kind of problem? The return currents can't flow in this area because there is no ground under the tracks. So the return currents will have to find a different way. They will have to go around the gap. And uh, this may cause a number of issues. For example, the return currents from all these three tracks are going to mix together. Or this may create different voltages on the left and right part of this ground plane, which can cause, uh, for example, EMC problems. Understanding written currents can help you, for example, understand how important it can be have a solid ground plane in your PCB stack up. It will help you to understand why two-layer PCB may be difficult to design. And if you have to design a two-layer PCB, you know what you need to think about. For example, how will return currents flow in your two-layer PCB?